You're watching Driving with Jay, and on this episode, we'll be driving with Army Sergeant Will Salmon, my personal hero. What up, Sergeant Salmon? What's up, dude? How are you? Good, man. No seatbelts in this? <laughs> Been in danger, more dangerous situation. How close are you to becoming a civilian? Two and a half months. Two and a half months after what? Nine years in the army? Eight. Eight years. How many times did you re-enlist? Uh, it's three and en uh, three enlistments. Three times you said. One enlistment, two re-enlistments. Why did you sign up two, two more times? I don't know, man. I got used to it. If you could put it into one sentence why you don't want to be in the Army anymore. It takes up too much time. Yeah, I don't see anybody, you know. Come come home for, what, 30 days a year and shit. So are you happy to be getting out or also confused? Nah, well, we'll see what it is when I, when I get out. You know, I don't really know what to expect. Um, going back to school. 27 going back to school, you know, graduating at 32. Fuck, you know, I gotta fucking start somewhere. How many times did you go back to Iraq? Twice. I went the first time, and then I went twice after that. So you went three times? Yeah, and then there was the deployment to uh, Kuwait. Uh, you were in Kuwait when September 11th happened. Right. Did it validate? You know, your role as someone whose job it is to defend the country. Otherwise, you'd be like a, like somebody who's played professional football, you know, their whole life, but then went to the Super Bowl. What was your actual role? Tell me about being in the Hummer and, like, your actual position in the war. I was the, uh, the gunner on a, on a Humvee. Was it constant anxiety to be driving around and knowing that at any point you could be running something over that would... Yeah, some guys talked about it like that. I don't know, it just, it was a... Uh, every time I went out was like a... Uh, like another chance to... Uh, to do something uh, uh, positive or to have, you know, some, some type of effect on a uh, situation larger than yourself. What was that moment of clarity? Uh, well, you get, you know, angry over there, and uh, there's a there's a lot going on over there to help feed that anger, you know. And you can, very quickly, you can go another route. We're on a, a observation post on a highway, and, you know, it was, it was dark, and they, they seen these uh, three guys. One had an RPG, and another guy was carrying rockets. We started shooting at these guys, and the... the we got the three guys, but it was like a thousand meters away, you know, so when we started moving uh, uh, towards them, people in the neighborhood snatched them off the ground and uh, dragged them off, and so, you know, when we got there, there wasn't really a, a, a finished product, but uh, a kid had been uh, uh, hitting his leg. How old was the kid? Uh, maybe one or two years old. His mother and, and probably uh, some of the other wives in the neighborhood were all gathering around him, crying and stuff. And he's just looking, you know, off into space. There's finally like a straight fight. You and these uh, uh, these three guys, and you know, you fire, you go down there, and <clears throat> the three guys ain't there anymore. But you got this kid who's hit anyway, so it's kind of uh, is that something draw you off the, you know. What, what you thought shit was supposed to be like, you know, kind of take you away from the uh, Hollywood aspect of the war. Were there moments that, you know, you saw something that, you know, probably 
should have shocked you and it didn't and you almost had to convince yourself to be shocked. It didn't become shocking to me until I got home and I would uh, tell people about it. Like some of the guys would be like, man, so, you know, tell me, you know, what uh, some of the shit that uh, that happened over there. You start going down the line and they say, oh man, that's crazy. And you're like, yeah, you know what? It is fucking crazy, you know? Um, since you've been in Iraq off and on for eight years, uh, obviously new people are coming in every year. How stressful is that? Every time, you know, you go, you're pretty much starting at square one because you got guys that have never been over there before and they got the same mentality that you had. They're constantly hearing stories and finally they get to go, so they try and, uh, make shit happen or fucking like wish for shit to happen so now you're fucking driving around with a guy and he's fucking wishing for shit were there fleeting moments of happiness and accomplishment if you did like a long a long raid that you know you started in the in the like early morning say you started like four o'clock in the morning and you know it's a hundred some odd degrees you know, outside, so you go through the morning, through the afternoon, and then you finally make it back at night, you know, the following, that day, you know, and you just, sweat's just pouring down you, and, you know, you feel like, man, I, you know, I, if you had told me it was going to be that long, I'd be like, oh man, I'm, we're not going to make it, but well, you did make it.